Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and break them out in bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some interesting stories about a little bit of a delay as far as Ethereum goes. Ethereum London hard fork, which includes that EIP 1559, looks like it's going to get pushed back uh, to August. Uh, how far? Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. And then we'll take a look at also some banks like Barclays, which are not allowing people to use their hard-earned money that they have uh, accumulated to pay for crypto. And this is very strange that we have banks like Barclays who just don't get it and are trying to protect uh, our ourselves from ourselves, which is very odd. And then you got banks like BNY Mellon, uh, State Street Bank with you know their trillions of assets under management, and 650 uh, other banks and credit unions who are dying to get into the crypto game. So what separates them? We'll talk about that. And then the real question is, is do we even need banks with a new little uh, uh, apparatus called Ledger which can do crypto swaps right from your ledger device. We're gonna do, we're gonna do one live on this video today. And finally, we'll finish up and talk about the uh, tomato coin airdrop for all the D news stake pools. And uh, just so you know, uh, tomato coin has no value whatsoever. So we'll take a look at that, but first take a look at what's going on the market. So today it is uh, July 6th. It's about uh, 10 a.m. in the morning and uh, market caps a little bit of recovery. Again, a little bit choppy, a little bit sideways. I don't expect many things to really do well and like go up, you know, 50, 60 percent or something crazy like that. You're going to see little pockets of things, but I see this is going to just move sideways for a while until August when we can totally blast off. Now that EIP 1559 goes from uh, July, which is what we were thinking about, uh, middle of July, third week of July to August, that coincides with the same thing that's happening with Cardano when their smart contracts uh, start to are set to uh, explode and actually uh, become live. And then uh, with Bitcoin, uh, you know, who knows? Let's see how it all works out. But uh, Bitcoin today, 24 hours, not a big thing. 3% for Ethereum. I thought Ethereum would probably go up. I think it's going to go up just because of this this new hard fork. So we'll see. Binance coin, 5%. Uh, wow, 15% for Uniswap, looking pretty good. 8% for Chainlink, that's pretty nice, 0.1%. And you can you can just kind of see that a lot of things are just uh, just teetering on the edge. Pancake swap, 10%. So there's going to be little bits and pieces there. So if you're a big trader, um, you know, maybe this is a great opportunity for you. Let's take a look at the projected range here. Let me uh, blow this up so you can see what I see. Uh, if you're a big trader, I'm not. Look at Teller, GNY, Linear, UMA, and Sushi. Looks for the projected range between 0.75 and 6, negative 3 to 9%, 4 to 10%, and on down the line. This one looks pretty good. Negative 0.6 to 5.93. What's this one? UMA. I would take a look at that. Now, financial advice. This is Trade the Chain. You can check it out in the links below. And that is it. Let's, uh, let's jump into today's uh, top story, which is... EIP 1559, a little bit of a delay. So what happened here? This was just released uh, yesterday, went under the radar. Now I'm following up with this one. So uh, Anthony Sassano, founder of ETH Hub, in a tweet says, look, the main net date block number for EIP 1559 at London Hard Fork is expected to be discussed and possibly announced at this week's Ethereum core developers meeting, which is on July 9th. So we still got uh, three more days to go. However, as people as people look out for the long expected hard fork with 1559 upgrade for ETH at the end of the week, there is every possibility that it could be postponed. And um, you know, some people will look at this and like, that's just awful, that's just negative. And some people look at it like, and just say, well, just get it right. And that's all we really care about. To me personally, I think it's best to uh, err on the side of caution. And if you have something that uh, doesn't look right, looks a little bit odd, delay it and then push it out when it's correct. Nobody wants to lose any crypto for whatever they're doing. And then uh, he goes on to state, hoping for an August 4th date myself, but it could be pushed out a week or two from that date, depending on various factors. Doesn't really talk about the factors, but says, hey, uh, we could look at the second or third week of August, maybe even September, who knows. In the earlier report, it said that EIP 1559 implementation will considerably reduce the problem of high gas fees for ETH investors. And this is certainly a welcome move for all ETH people or all ETH investors, myself included. Uh, but miners have largely opposed it. And this is one of those things where we look at this and we say, is this going to be a really great thing? Some people say it's going to drastically, re drastically reduce the fees. Some people say, no, it's not going to really reduce the fees. It's all about, you know, kind of shuffling these fees around and giving tips to the miners, which I'm sure miners are probably not too happy about just getting tips when they were, yeah, let's be honest, getting paid pretty fat and uh, 
that's all I can just say. So again, I don't really see this as a as a huge negative. I think it's gonna might affect the price because people hate delays, but again, we'll see how it all works out. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece, which is Barclays and what the heck is going on with crypto. I don't understand this because if I'm a bank and I'm seeing my customers, I can see where the funds of flows of money goes to, and they're going to a bunch of exchanges. I know those exchanges are getting paid fat, Coinbase, and uh, they're getting paid pretty well in fees. I want those fees as a business. I'm losing out on that. So when I see stuff like this from Barclays, I'm like, what the heck is going on? And we've seen uh, other different banks uh, also do this, but this was new. This was uh, actually yesterday, and uh, people have gotten messages like this all, and I, you can see it all across Twitter. And I'll state, as you've made a payment to Binance this year, we wanted to let you know that we're stopping payments made by credit debit cards to them until further noticed. This is to help keep your money safe in our banks. So, and then uh, it goes on for something else and blah, blah. So to me, I'm just thinking to myself, I know that Binance has had some regulatory issues, especially in the UK, and we have covered this. It wasn't like they were shut down totally in the UK. It's just that their financial products, like futures, were not allowed over there. And then they're figuring other things out. And there's there's other things other things happening in like uh, Japan and other parts of the world. There's an investigation here and there, but look, what are you going to do? So do I think that Binance will totally be shut down altogether? Nah, probably not. But uh, I just don't like how Barclays is like, we're trying to protect you. Don't you worry about oh, whatever. So it's a, it's a weird thing to where Barclays is saying stuff like this. And you got like, again, like a BNY Mellon, which trillions of assets under management. I think it's the second oldest bank in America. And this was back in February 11th. And they were going to offer Bitcoin services. Uh, let's see. Oh, nation's oldest bank. Excuse me. It, it'll eventually allow digital currencies to pass the same financial network it currently uses for traditional holdings like treasury bonds and equities and look it's all about money they want your business and they're going to get it state street bank again multiple trillions 40 trillions in assets but i think they have like two trillion assets under management so to be careful with what they say there and uh it's uh expanding its digital reach to include crypto token is oh wow currency blockchain and tokenization and will upgrade its existing uh global link platform into a multi-asset digital trading system. So another one that really wants to get in, into play. And then this one just came out uh, about a week ago or so. Uh, 6 billion NCR, which is like a payments uh, processing type of uh, uh, financial service, opens Bitcoin purchases to 650 banks and credit unions. And they were like, we are all on board. We need this to happen. We would like to share in these profits if you'll let us. And these are the banks that are going to make it. These other ones like Barclays, I'm sorry to say, I I don't really think they have your best interests at heart. I could be wrong. I'm just a cynic. But let me know what you think in the comments section. And this kind of leads me to my next piece, which is Ledger Swap. What is this? Well, uh, I was contacted by Ledger, and I want to say thank you, Ledger, for promoting this video and being one of a. Uh, this is a paid promotion. Paid promotion. This is a paid promotion video on this part. Just so you know. Also, there should have been something that popped up that said, it's a paid promotion. I rarely do these, but they said, hey, what, do you want to talk about this? And I was like, well, why not? And you're going to pay me? Sure, I'll do it. So this is what it is. What I'm going to do, you just need a Nano Ledger. You can get one in the link in the description. I think there's even a discount if you use my code. And how this works, you don't need a bank anymore. You can just start swapping. You can start buying crypto with fiat, and you can start swapping in your Nano Ledger either an X or an S, right from the device itself, right from Ledger Live. So let me let me pull this up. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. Okay. So let me first type in my super secret password. One, two, three, four, five. Same combination as my luggage. And okay, so here's what Ledger Live looks like. Okay, this is the actual interface on your computer that you download. This is your uh, cold storage wallet device. And, uh, and real quick, before I move on, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and how to use these things, and it looks very difficult. It's really not. And uh, I'm just gonna direct you to this handy dandy website called Dan Teaches Crypto. I think it spins above my head all the time. It's 100% free. You can go there and sign up uh, and you just need your email, that's all. I don't even spam you. I just send you email when I do new videos that are into the members area. So you'll go there and then uh, this is the members home. 
And if you're looking for like, like me personally, like if I'm looking for like, well, which module is the ledger stuff into? Like, here's a table of contents right down here. And I just do a command F ledger. Like, okay, safety module. Okay, so I'm gonna go to safety module. And this is what's a crypto wallet. And I go through the hot, colds, uh, warms. <laughs> And then uh, what's a public private key, how to set up your nano ledger, set up, setting up your ledger live app, which we're doing right now, uh, transferring crypto assets from exchanges to wallets, very simple, and how to delete and restore a nano ledger because look, your crypto is not stored here. It's in the private keys, it's in the blockchain. And yeah, that'll make a lot more sense when you watch that video. And then transferring, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's all for you, 100% free, check that out. All right, so back to ledger. <laughs> Let's see here. So what do we got? So on the left-hand side, portfolio accounts, send, receive, very simple, very good to know. Buy and sell. I'm going to go over this real quick. So buy and sell. I'm in America and I got one option, which is wire. So you can, it's only bank accounts, USD support only, 20 plus crypto supported, which I think Bitcoin's one of them. I don't know for sure. ACH transfer, uh, which is uh, automated clearing house for your bank. So you can actually do that again and again but you can't use credit and debit cards. So it's going to uh, be a wire, it sounds like. Well, no, sorry, excuse me, ACH, which is much easier. And then Coinify, if you're outside the United States, it's like everywhere else, which usually that's what America does. So you click on this here, you click continue. Yeah, choose a crypto asset. All right, this is what I got. I have Bitcoin and Ethereum on my on my ledger. I've got, but I've got like three or four ledgers with different things on it. And that's another another, another uh, trick and tip. Don't keep everything in one place. Keep them kind of scattered around a little bit. Uh, don't keep them all in one exchange. That's a bad idea. You never know. And let's see, open up the Bitcoin app. Uh, approve. Jeez, wait. All these different buttons I got to push. And then it's going to have you create your account. First name, last name, email, full social, just so you know, KYC, AML, date of birth. And after this, it's going to ask you for your wire instructions or your bank account information. And then you can start to buy crypto on this uh, right here. So that is just one way to do things. But for me, I don't really going to, not going to do it. I'm just going to be honest with you. But this one right here, the swap feature looks pretty cool. So again, if you're in America, you can only use Paraswap. Changely is like everything else. You know, that's uh bad is what it is. So I'm going to click on Paraswap. What is swap? Uh, continue. And what's pretty cool is like, it's going to be able to search out 30 plus different DEXs, hopefully find you the best price. I don't know what to tell you. And then of course up here, it's going to ask you what kind of, since I've only got Ethereum, because this only does uh, DEXs, which is all Ethereum anyhow, for right now then we're gonna be able to say okay if i got an eth what do you want to receive and then when you click on this buh, 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 here's all the different tokens you can get which is a boatload let's be honest uh, geez prime and christmas I, uh, let me look for something like i like celsius and what i like about this is because like on some of those those dexes you put in like a celsius and, and it'll always like warn you like well this could be a fake celsius so you're like, well, I don't know. So at least on Ledger, they've already you know vetted out the process. So if I click on swap, I can swap for Celsius. I don't know. Let me see. Uniswap V2, V3, balancer. Okay. All right. Let me put in 0 0.25 ETH. How many cell do I get? Sure. Whatever. Let's swap. Da -da 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 -da. Max slippage rate. Wow. Let's try 0.5% and get this going. So slippage, price differences, everything else, 3% seems kind of ridiculous. Current price, da, 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 price impact, 0.72, confirm order. Holy smokes. Yeah, so here's another problem. Uh, you can pay these fees, 30 bucks. Get the heck out of here. 45 and 55 and custom, no way. Anyhow, that's what it is. If you want want to pay those fees go right ahead i'm not into that maybe for you outside the united states when we take a look at uh swapping you might do changely and you know trains bitcoin everything else i'm not doing that you're out of your mind so anyhow hope you enjoyed that tutorial that's what's going on in that little world and let's finish up real quick Ooh, with everybody's favorite the tomato coin so just real quick just so you know everybody who is a uh, uh, in the 
D News stake pool for Cardano, which I did a video yesterday. 71% uh, of all Cardano is already staked. If you're not staking your Cardano, why not? It's super simple. I showed it to you in two minutes in the video yesterday. Uh, everybody who is uh, staking with uh, with us is going to receive tomato coin. What's tomato coin? It's a meme coin. It's a joke. It's just for fun. It's like one of those things I've been saying for like, ever since I started this channel, I talked about tomato coin and it made no sense and it still doesn't make any sense. But the guys that helped me with the pool said, you should do a tomato coin. I'm like, sure, whatever. So it's uh, it's been minted on the Cardano blockchain and I'm going to be airdropping it to random people throughout this entire uh, 2021 and hopefully everybody will get a little bit of, uh, of uh, tomato coin. We got a lot of different delegators, so it'll just be random. And that's what's going on. What can you do with tomato coin? Uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, what value does it have? Zip. And uh, should you use it uh, as, as a currency if you can get away with it? I don't know. Maybe if you go to like uh, Olive Garden or uh, Papa John's, maybe they'd accept it. I have no idea. But uh, it's just uh, for fun, for funsies, not a big deal. But uh, it will be there. So, you know, who knows? Once we get smart contracts, I might even put on a DEX. I have no idea. But I want to stress this just for fun. Just saying thank you. Nice little graphical representation. And finally, which leads me to my last point. If you're a graphic artist or you're a good artist or a painter or whatever else, and you have an idea of what you think the tomato coin should look like, uh, send it to me. You can DM me uh, right there at, at News Asset uh, in Twitter. Send me that. Or you can find my email, which is in the description of every one of my videos. And that is it for today. So first of all, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like this types of videos, uh, go ahead and uh, consider subscribing. Uh, everything we talk about is time sensitive and that would help. Also, give it a like, give it a subscribe and we'll go from there. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.